Hello, and welcome to another Ask Octopus, where we answer questions from our customers and the community. Uh, so today I've got Derek, Bob, and Sean with me. How are you guys doing? I'm good, Ryan. I'm finishing up for the weekend very, very soon. So I'm always good at this time on uh, Ask Octopus Friday. I can tell you have the Friday afternoon look on your face. <laughs> <laughs> and my time zone is the beginning of the day, so... Uh, cool. I've got an interesting question today. So this came through from a customer. Uh, they're deploying .NET Core applications, and they asked, how can I substitute Boolean and number values into JSON config files? Uh, and I didn't know the answer to this off the top of my head. Uh, did, did you guys, you know this one? Did you know it before it uh, came up in our, in our chats? No. Actually, no, not at all. Um, it's funny because most of the time when I use .NET Core, I use like JSON. When I use configuration uh, files, is I always assumed they were strings, so I always just translated those in my source code to do that. And that's just my old ASP.NET way of thinking. Yeah, I'm exactly the same way. I'm used to XML configuration files. Everything mm -hmm. is string. It's like I didn't even think about it. I'm like, oh yeah, JSON is just you know JavaScript objects. You can have not only can you have number values or booleans, you can have arrays or even sub objects. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the good news is we support this already. It wasn't a change we had to make. Uh, and I'm going to just jump into uh, one of our demo projects. I added some, I added a Boolean. I think that one was already there, but I've added, we have this uh, logging include scopes set to false in mm. our app settings JSON. And I just added a, uh, what I, a, a, an app setting that I thought would be a number. So default timeout, we'll set that to 60. So you see that's not a string. Mm -hmm. And I haven't changed anything, uh, well, besides the variables in our project. So the, this is the project that deploys uh, that application. And, and this is how you reference kind of like sub values within uh, that JSON value, uh, file. So app settings, colon, default timeout. You can see I've got a number in there. And then logging, colon, include scopes is set to true. So we should see both of those change and keep their value. Uh, and actually with that last sentence, that's how, that's exactly how it works. Uh, when we do the JSON substitution, the variable substitution to the JSON files, if the existing value is a number uh, in the file and we're putting a number in, we try to keep that same type, uh, same as the, the Boolean. If it sees that it's a, a Boolean value, it doesn't have this, the quotes around it, we're going to try and substitute a Boolean value in with no quotes around it. Does case matter? I thought I saw another one that was capital true. Uh, in, in the variables or? Who's at the top? At the top. Uh, Approval okay. required? Yeah, that's not used in the, the file. So that's a good question. I don't know if the capitalization matters or not. We can, you know what, we're, uh, we're recording. Let's just do it live. See what happens. <laughs> Yellow. <laughs> I was like, the good news is I've already run this. So I've got an, uh, I've got an example to, to show, but I'll go ahead and create that release and we'll see if uh, capitalization matters. That's a good question, Sean. The approval required that true comes from, uh, that's for variable run conditions in Octopus Deploy itself. It says if it evaluates to true, so I just put a capital true in there and call it, call it good. So right. yep, that definitely evaluated to true. Yeah, so what I've done and the, uh, I modified our, our random quotes process a little bit. I don't know if you guys noticed, but no. uh, very, very minor thing. I had it add the app settings JSON as an artifact so I could get to it easier. <laughs> That's a good idea considering this is all running on some server in Azure. Right, I didn't want to have to go find credentials and find the virtual machine mm -hmm. and log in. Just want to capture that. Uh, and I've, I've already downloaded that so you can see that that, new value of 110 and that value true have come through and have kept the, the values. So number values, so like decimals and, and integers, booleans will come through um, and keep the value. The, say if, the, if the existing file has that value, that type already. Uh, but we can also do other things, like you can, you can replace a full JSON object within the file. You, if you have arrays in your JSON configuration, you can replace individual elements or you can replace the entire array. So there's a lot of flexibility with the JSON config file and the variable substitution. It's really nice. Now that that is running, let's see. It may take a little while to run because I think that's got, it's doing some work with. Uh, some oh, the database, yeah. Yeah. 
but we'll, we can wait for it. So that's um, interesting because I've, yeah, I've never really had a chance to, or desire to play around with it, but I imagine a lot of our customers, that's probably something that's pretty important to be able to keep not only the type, but being able to go in and change individual array values. That's, that's awesome that you could do that. Yeah, uh, that's a good point. It's like, I don't have an example of that, but I was looking through because I wanted to be prepared for the question of like, what, you know, what types do we substitute? Uh, and this is actually, so Calamari does the, uh, the substitution that's open source and there's some tests in that open source project that kind of goes through all of those scenarios of like um, introducing like an, or replacing an element. So I think the way, if I remember right, let's say like you had app settings environment was an array and not just a single thing. If you wanted to change a certain index, you would just do colon in the index. And then oh. if, if the existing value is an array, it would say, oh, well, I want to put this value in the, the first index. See, I would have thought it would have been bracket, uh, bracket one or something like that. So that's, that's interesting. And if you left it, if it's an array and you leave it like this, it will just replace the, the full value. So you can put the array as the, the variable value and it will replace that in. Same thing, you could put a JSON object in as the variable value and it will replace a full JSON object. I mean, that's not something I'd recommend is going in and changing individual values in an array because that seems pretty brittle, <laughs> but it's cool that we do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm sure I could come up with a, a use case for it, but. I don't have one prepared. Yeah. So, let's see, let's see, all right, should be getting to that eventually. Yeah, this was uh, one of the projects I was doing for testing out subscriptions, and I probably want to say maybe two or three releases before I started going in and disabling a bunch of database steps because I'm <laughs> like, I just need to get to the very, very end. Because man, you know, I didn't try to test. <laughs> I could have yeah. just excluded most of the steps. <laughs> Yeah, when you try to test something out and you're just sitting here going, come on, man, let's, let's, let's hurry up. And it doesn't, I mean, this isn't a, a fault on Redgate's tooling. It's more of a fault on the size of the VM that we use for our demos. This is, a, this is about as small as I let it get and have it do any, any sort of response. I think I did like maybe two cores and four gigs of RAM. So you can imagine that almost all those cores and all that RAM is being used just to run Windows. I would say like another thing that we can point out while we're uh, filling time, waiting for that to finish, is that it's not necessarily specific to .NET Core because mm -hmm. the, the feature is generic. It's JSON configuration variables. So it's not necessarily tied to .NET Core. You can specify other JSON files to do uh, substitutions into them. So if you're using JSON for some other uh, project type or application type, or if you just have some configuration stored in JSON as part of your, your application, then that will work the same. That's a really good point. Hey, it looks like it finished. All right, so we're gonna download this and open. Uh, oh no, it says, so it doesn't matter. It, it converted the value capital T true to the Boolean and put it in. Oh no, you're on app settings three. Oh no, yeah, 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 you're on app settings four. Never mind, sorry. I, I use Visit VS Code every day. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, I'm glad you're, you're looking out for me because I, I would hate to make a mistake there. But no, it looks like it works fine, so. Yeah. Good question, Sean. Glad we could uh, get, a, get an answer to that one. But on that, I'm gonna end my session for the day. So thanks for everybody for tuning in. If you have questions, you can submit them at hello.octopus.com slash askoctopus. There's a form to fill out there. Uh, if you have any uh, questions or issues with your deployments, please email us at support at octopus.com and we'll get an answer back to you and potentially see it on a future video. And we have a community Slack channel that you can join at octopus.com slash Slack. Uh, join the community, a lot of nice people there, uh, always willing to help out and, and share ideas. So good place to be. Uh, guys, Derek, Bob, Sean, thanks for joining today and I will talk to you in a bit. Yeah, thank you. That was really good. See you later.